Tang is the appropriate, and then uh, Tong Yen. Tong Yen. Well, we can talk about Okay, let's well, do some right. stuff without his voice. Papers are okay in my lap? Yes. Yeah, just some of us. Okay. Okay, can you describe for me the climate as it is right now? Here we go. Hi, ma'am. The pronunciation is Yang? Yes. Tong Yen. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yang. Yeah, we'll have, we'll right, have right, a different right, right. pronunciations. And we'll say, least. but that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, can you describe for me the climate as it is right now in, in China? For journalists in this run-up period to the Olympics, uh, for Chinese journalists, things are, are uh, at a very high level of, of restrictions. We were accustomed to seeing a, uh, a sort of up-and-down uh, pattern in, in, uh, in restriction on media in China. But since about October, November of last year, um, when there was a National Party Congress, the government came down tighter, as it usually does during those periods. We're accustomed to seeing uh, a relaxation of those rules uh, a week or two after these events end. But instead, uh, the level of restrictions has stayed at that, at that level. And it looks to stay that way in until the games. Um. In one of Yang's articles, he describes, it's, it's entitled, China Permeated with Fear. Mm -hmm. Why do you think he says that? What is, the, what is you know, there, it's basically, you know, it's this beautiful land, but it's all generated by fear. Freedom, there's no freedom of expression. Can you describe what that's going on there? Uh, there, is, there is a fear, especially amongst uh, people like Yang. Um, who really push the envelope on, on what's allowed to be said, and, and clearly um, the government feels, feels he pushed it far, uh, too far out uh, of, the, uh, of the limits. I think what you see in China are people trying to feel their way um, to, to push those limits of expression. We see it in journalists working all the time. Not all journalists in China are running around uh, frightened of going to jail. There's so many social and administrative restrictions placed upon them, and the rules are so clear uh, and the apparatus so elaborate that uh, Chinese journalists um, know well uh, when to stop pushing. But it's journalists like, uh, like uh, internet writers uh, and um, people who take on causes and be who become activists and sort of blur the line between journalist, activist, internet writer who really do push the envelope. And I think uh, those people operate uh, at, a, at a place much closer to the edge than, uh, than uh, many other Chinese. And those people uh, are in danger and, and they have every right to be afraid. Why do you think Yang, knowing full well of what may happen if he were to write this stuff, did so anyway? I think some people feel a moral imperative uh, to, uh, to take on uh, situations uh, uh, th like that that exist in China, where you have an authoritarian government uh, and a reluctance on the part of, of many other citizens to, to challenge that government. Yang is out there in the front. He's, uh, he's, he's way ahead of, the, uh, of, of, of that edge. It's not, uh, it, it certainly represents a tendency and a feeling and an emotion, but I think it's uh, an attitude that many people in China back away from that are frightened to, to take on, to adapt, just because of, uh, of the sort of sentences that can be handed down if you, fall, if you fall afoul of the authorities like that. You know, he's not only a journalist, but he's also a poet mm. and just a writer. Mm -hmm. and, and, and even in his poetry, he talks about, do you know any of his poetry? No, I don't actually. Okay. Sorry. I was going to say if we could talk about some of his poetry, yeah. but um, maybe you could describe to me what the authoritarian, what an authoritarian culture is. <sighs> China is a one-party state, and it's been that way for uh, since the revolution in the 1940s. Uh, the Communist Party, uh, tries to control, maintain its, maintain its lock on power. Uh, in in uh, recent years, it's expanded its base. It's, it's allowed more people to enter it. It's, adapted, it's adopted uh, capitalist uh, entrepreneurs as, as, as party members and it's tried to remain uh, the all-encompassing party which controls uh, the debate and moderates what is discussed and what can't be discussed. Uh, within the Communist Party, there's a wide range of opinion. 
um, and that you can uh, you can you can see a entirely different approaches. Uh, some from the, from old socialist lines, some from uh, from the University of Chicago, and they come together and they meet. But that discussion, that dynamic. Um, is what has to be controlled by the by the uh, Communist Party of China, and that's what they're most reluctant to allow to get out into the open. Uh, journalists, who who try to incorporate those discussions, who try to broaden them out and try and bring them out uh, beyond the party limits, are the people very often who are who are most in danger, um, and that's that's what we've seen in this case as well. Um, what can you tell me about Yang's case? What do you know about it? You know, let me read up on it, too. <laughs> and basically, he was sentenced to 12 years. Yeah. Um, you get the verdict. Yeah. The charge that he's brought up against is the most common one that we see in China, uh, subverting state authority. Uh, there are other names for it. Um, uh, calling into question the validity of the state, uh, breaching state security laws, but there's this this um, array of just generalized terms uh, which allow people who really haven't committed any terribly great crime other than a fall afoul of the, of the Communist Party to be charged and to be sentenced. These sort of sentences are the ones that bring down the, uh, these sort of verdicts rather, are the ones that bring down the, the longest sentences. And I think more than half of the journalists that we count uh, in jail uh, are, are, are held under, under these sorts of charges. They're not unique in, in this situation. And frankly, we've spoken to, uh, to lawyers who represent journalists and, and human rights activists, and they said they're seeing more of these sort of uh, state security laws and subversion laws being used in, in the past two years, rather than seeing them uh, diminish. Do you think that there is a chance that there's going to be a call to action to get him released? Do you think that there's a possibility? that before the Olympics that things may change? CPJ is, we count uh, 25 journalists in jail as, as of today uh, in, in behind bars in China, and we're, and we're calling for, for China to release those people. Um, unfortunately, these things don't resonate uh, through, uh, through Chinese society, mainly because the media is so controlled. And I think you'd be surprised how few people know about this case within China. Outside of, uh, uh, of China, these issues are, are discussed openly and, and they're thrown around. Uh, I think in, in Yang's case, there was one small mention of, uh, of the verdict and the, and, and the sentencing in, in, in a few newspapers, uh, and then uh, it's been completely off the charts. The trick is to not only raise this hue and cry outside, uh, outside, the, outside of China, but uh, also within the country. That's increasingly, uh, well, that's very hard to do when you, when you have such tight media control. Can you tell me what CPJ is? We've charted the case. Um, I think the last we spoke with was with his lawyer soon after, uh, after, the, uh, after the verdict was handed down. Um, there's a question of an appeal. We don't see that uh, pushing ahead uh, terribly hard. Um, I think what we do is continue to mention his name in the context of other jailed journalists during this Olympic, the, during this period, uh, pre-Olympic period, that uh, we can push harder for all these men, and they're all men, uh, to be released. Uh, Yang is one case, um, but as I say, we count uh, 24 other cases, uh, and that number is fluctuating all the time. Some are released, and we saw a flurry of releases at the beginning of this year. Some were actually people who were due out. Some were let out on, uh, surprisingly, most likely on humanitarian terms. Very hard to predict what will happen. I think you continue to pressure the Chinese government. You continue to keep these cases in, in front of the international public. When you get an opportunity, you raise them in China, but it's a very slow, uh, slow and, and deliberate process. I'm sorry, I think I misunderstood. Can you tell me what the Committee to Protect Journalists is? Can ah. You <laughs> 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 there you go. No. You get a great anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, CPJ is 26 years old this year. It was started by journalists, uh, and its board, our board of directors are all working journalists. 
uh, most of the people on our staff are journalists, and, and we use journalism as an approach to advocate for um, journalist rights, uh, freedom, and, and, uh, and larger freedom of expression issues. Uh, we use the tools of journalism uh, as, uh, to advocate for, for, those, uh, for those issues. But I think what we've found in, in the years, uh, in, in the 26 years, that, uh, that the concept, the idea of, of just who or what a journalist is, has constantly expanded. Uh, in, uh, when we first started, uh, it was pretty clear cut. Um, now we have to take into account uh, bloggers, uh, internet activists, people who kind of uh, straddle this um, activism, journalism, uh, the freedom, the uh, freedom of expression that's brought about by the internet, who who uh, who aggregate that into a into a new sphere, a new definition of of just what a journalist is. Uh, in this case, uh, I, I think uh, this is the, this is the perfect aggregation of activism, journalism, and and. Uh, and a freedom of expression issue. Why would Yang let him go sit in? Uh, it's not uncommon in China, um, particularly when you're uh, publishing outside of the uh, outside of the country. Uh, his two, the two major outlets that he had outside of uh, outside of China, were uh, something called Epoch Times, which is closely associated with uh, Falun Gong and a website called Boshan News, which is really uh, a really interesting phenomenon, which has capitalized on this, this, this sort of new world of, of activism, journalism, uh, internet access. Boshan takes reports from people inside the country who can't uh, uh, have them staged anywhere else and posts them uh, on servers based outside of, uh, outside of China. Difficult to access Boshan from inside China, but not impossible. And Boshan operates on the uh, on the principle of um, once this material is available in English and, and in Chinese, um, that it tends to go viral. That it gets to be copied, cut, pasted, attached to an email, put in a text message, uh, and you you see China running after it in all sorts of directions, trying to control the appearance of these sorts of articles. Um, to a lesser, sometimes to a greater extent, China is successful, but so far they haven't been able to corral that uh, that internet uh, freedom of speech, that that activism that, that's that's uh, presented quite a challenge. Boshin isn't uh, terribly widely read itself in in uh, in China, but its articles do tend to get reproduced, do tend to get moved around, and and do tend to uh, influence uh, public opinion. Why do you think they chose Yang as the awardee for this year's gala? Um, you know, I'm not sure. You have to ask them. <laughs> um, you know, we look. We uh, we CPJ does uh, annual awards too, and 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 we're looking at China this year, and and we're looking at uh, at people who um, who press these envelopes who press these limits, who go out and, and confront, wisely or unwisely, confront the, the government on, on, on specific issues, on issues of democracy, on issues of free speech, on issues of human rights. Um, there's, a, there's a body of these men. There's a group of these men. Um, some are in prison. Some have just been released. Some, uh, it's wise to uh, press and put forward their cases uh, for hope and hope that you'll get some sort of sympathetic response from the government. Uh, others, it's best to hang back, wait until they're released. Last year, we uh, we uh, we honored a uh, a journalist who had been jailed for 13 years, a uh, Xinhua reporter, uh, released after eight years. Um, didn't honor him while he was in jail. Waited till he was released, and then uh, and then gave him the award. He was not allowed to come to the United States to receive it, but. There's always a balance of um, do honoring these people, bringing their cases to light, and putting them forward. They certainly serve a purpose of publicizing them in our world, but does it uh, does it help? Uh, is it of assistance to them in in their world? And we would never make that decision without the approval of, if not the imprisoned journalist, at least uh, his family or his lawyer or those close to him and most involved in the case. Um. 
So there's a lot at stake for these journalists. I mean, I would say, you know, there's a lot at stake for journalists around the world, but it seems so much more in China to be able, you know, to go there and to be able to have any, there's no freedom of speech. That's, That's not true. Okay. Um, it's incorrect to think that Chinese journalists are walking around frightened of uh, going to jail. We count uh, 25 journalists in jail as of this moment. I'm not sure what, what Penn's numbers are. But the fact of the matter is that the vast majority of journalists in China are not in jail. There is an apparatus run by the uh, State Propaganda Department, and that's its name, <laughs> um, which hands down daily, almost sometimes hourly directives. They come down by email, they come down by phone. They're spread, they're spread across the country. They target uh, areas where news is breaking that the government wants to control. On top of that, there are apparatus within uh, in, uh, broadcasters, within publishers, within newspapers, um, operating at the company level in which people say, let's not push too hard, let's not take these chances, let's pull back, let's wait and take a chance on, on, uh, on another issue where we can have more impact. And you have journalists pushing. Uh, pushing this envelope, but knowing that going too far, uh, you do pay a high price. You do wind up in jail, or you do wind up losing your job, or, you, or, the, or the publication for which you work gets closed down, or it's punished in some way, advertising revenues are withheld, um, that you have to pick your battles carefully if, if you're a working journalist or if, if you expect to be a successful uh, media organization in, in China, one that pushes the envelope but doesn't go too far. Freedom of speech, is, as we know it in, in Western countries, is, is curtailed. It's, uh, it's not the same as, uh, as, as what we enjoy uh, in the United States or in, or in Western Europe or, or uh, East Asia. But you find working journalists constantly pushing, uh, trying to go to push that envelope, to push those restrictions, to test the government. Uh, and then you find journalists uh, with, with such a strong commitment uh, to what they believe in um, and to what, is, it, it, what makes their life worthwhile uh, and what makes their profession worth pursuing that uh, they take greater risks. And uh, they know very often that, that they're going too far and that they will take this, kind of sort of, uh, take this sort of hit, that pay this sort of price. He's been in jail for 12 years now, and he is very sick. Mm. Um, he's got diabetes, and um, nothing is being given to him to help him out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's interesting. It's like you would think that um, he would have hurt somebody to be yeah. receiving this kind of punishment. Yeah, it's almost corporal punishment. Um, the conditions under which prisoners are held in China are, are not very good. Um, they very seldom get a, a, a sympathetic understanding, um, especially when they've, when they've tackled the government on some, such fundamental issues as, as democracy, as, as, uh, as, as fundamental human rights questions. Uh, to help this man? Uh, maybe this sort of activity will, will, uh, will be of use. It's not like the Chinese authorities don't know his condition. It's not like they don't understand that uh, he is physically suffering. Um, it is important uh, that they are reminded that, that uh, people like this are not forgotten in jail, that their case remains uh, remains. Uh, in the conscience of, if not uh, the government's conscience, and then in the conscience of his colleagues and, and, and people outside of China. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty good for not knowing that. Really good. For, really, really, really <laughs> yes, good. Yes, thanks. Thank you. Oh, okay.